Hello everyone. Today I just wanted to show you really quickly a frequency chart that I've been working on lately and try to explain a little bit of the history behind it and how to read it. Okay, so when I first started flying FPV a couple of years ago, I came across an article on propwash.com's webpage about FPV frequencies, and they had this great chart on their website that really helped me visualize what all the frequency bands and channels were and how they're laid out, how they overlap. So then recently when I got the digital DJI FPV HD system, I thought, hey, I should add their channels to this chart to make it you know, more complete. And I did that, and I posted it on Reddit, and there were some great comments other people had for other suggestions and updates, and Joshua Bardwell chimed in saying, hey, you should add the 5.8 gigahertz Wi-Fi channels to this so we can see where those are and try to avoid those as well. So I decided I would start all over and scrap the propwash.com's uh, graphic and rebuild my own using theirs as sort of the, the model or template to go off of. And what I ended up with is what you see here. So across the top, you can see the entire frequency range that our video transmitters transmit on all the way from down at the 5650 and a little bit below all the way up to 5950. And this red bar here, right along the frequencies with the dashed lines at either end, is labeled the FCC allocation for amateur use. This is the legal range that you can use in the United States as a ham radio operator. So as you can see, there are some bands, like band E has channel 4 and channel 8, which are definitely outside of the legal range. And then there are other channels like race band that kind of bleed over into the edge. But I should, I should describe a little bit better uh, how to read this chart. So let's see. We'll start here with this, Boss Cam A. A is the band. So if you're in your FPV goggles and you're scrolling through your frequencies, you usually select a band and a channel. This would be the band A. And over here is the visualization for channel 8, which is on frequency 5725. And 5725 is represented by this sort of dark line in the middle. And this lighter area here is the range that that channel uses. It's approximately a 30 megahertz range. And as you get out towards the sides, it probably uses a little bit less of that megahertz range. But as you can see with this band, channel 7 and channel 8 are closer than 30 megahertz to each other. So there's this area in between that overlaps. So if you're on channel 8 and your friend's on channel 7, you're going to interfere with each other. So that's why this, a graph or a chart like this does a great job of helping you visualize and see, oh, this channel 8 overlaps with channel 7. So you should separate yourselves a lot more. Or you could see that uh, band B here, channel 1, also overlaps with A is channel 8. And you can see that the order where channel 1 is on the right side here, channel 1 is on the left side over here. So that's why I really like the way this helps me just sort of visualize and look at a glance and see what all the bands are, what all the channels are, how they overlap, and how they interact with each other. And uh, down here at the bottom, you can see I added the DJI's channels from their documentation. And there's an interesting feature here where you can see that they go in order and they're almost following race band very closely up until you get to channel 8. goes channel 5. 867. No idea why they did that, but that's what DJI decided to do. Channel 8 is the default channel new goggles will start up on, so I tried to highlight that a little bit. And down here you can see the 5.8 gigahertz Wi-Fi range. It goes way off the bottom of the chart here, but the part that matters the most is you can see where channel 165 ends and so if you've got a environment with lots of Wi-Fi, 5.8 gigahertz Wi-Fi, and you're trying to avoid it, you'd be best trying to use some of these channels over here that are a little bit off the end of the Wi-Fi. Okay, so then down here in the right-hand corner, you can see that there's this section called Best IMD Channels, or IMD stands for Intermodular Distortion, I believe. So basically, 
to, to try to explain that in as simple terms as possible, uh, if you've got two people broadcasting on two channels, they can join together and cause interference on a third channel that's way outside of the range. Um, I'm not sure exactly which channels that are, but let's say race band one is what you're on and a friend's on E1. Those two can mix together and make all kinds of noise on channel race band five, and that person would have no idea why they're getting such crazy interference. So you can calculate what the best IMD channel groupings are if you've got two, three, four, five, or six pilots. Um, I've found various... Uh, information out on the internet as to which groups are the best. So I put a couple of options down here for five pilots and six pilots. I believe a lot of the multi-GP races will use something called IMD 5C and IMD 6C. And I've got what those are listed down here. So if you're flying with friends, go through, like if you've got four people, pick these four numbers uh, and uh, stick with those and hopefully you'll have some good results. All right, so thanks for watching, and I hope you learned something from this. And if there's any suggestions or if anybody can point out anything I've got wrong on this chart, please let me know, and I'll try to keep it up to date. Thanks for watching. See you later.